So today I want to talk about um, a little application of technology that we really see over the last five years has started to tr tremendously transform business. We call it data-driven dashboards. We have to start with the obligatory definition. A dashboard is an application that allows the meaningful inspection of a complex system to support decision making. The system may be a portfolio, a business, an agency, or an industry. Uh, given that this is a technical audience, we also have to have a conceptual model as well, which I think could help explain the depth of the problem. It's not just a pretty face. Um, originally, it's, usually it starts with, on the right-hand side, um, a very large collection of operational systems that support business activity. These operational systems throw off data that tell you something about what's going on. The next step is to aggregate the information from multiple systems, pull them together, and we can envision that as basically building a data cube so we can slice and dice and manipulate the information in ways that are useful to us. Third, we put a user experience around it. The user experience can actually be very simple. It might just be a query dashboard, or it could be extremely complicated involving um, heavy analytic technologies, graphical information systems and mapping, um, operations research, simulations, uh, Web 2.0 tech, technologies to allow interactive feedback back and forth between the system, which ultimately results in a user experience, uh, in our case, always behind a browser, uh, sometimes for the public, sometimes for organizations internally. So given that there's been an explosion in this kind of application over the last five years, you have to ask the question, why now? Well, we see four major factors driving to converge on this moment in time where it's become really um, possible to build these things quickly and effectively. Um, the first is we have about 50 years of experience with this. If you go back into the academic literature, it started in the early 60s with people talking about decision support systems. In the 70s, the first systems were put into production and started to get built. In the 80s, we started talking about business intelligence, um, data warehouse, data mart, um, business process improvement, uh, and the term started exploding. And then with the internet coming along, uh, we're now at a point where, as Vivek pointed out earlier, the dashboard, the IT dashboard, recovery.gov, a number of other federal dashboards are truly transformative in terms of how, um, how the government works. And the amazing thing is how quickly they're able to put them together, right? The second factor really gets to the technology, which is the underlying bandwidth. Uh, this chart shows, this is a, 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 a mid-sized college uh, in the Midwest, and they, this is their internet connectivity, their WAN connectivity spanning from about 95 uh, to 2009. They've seen a 3,000-fold increase in bandwidth and accessibility to the internet. It started with a 56 KB modem. I don't remember how many people are old enough to remember 56 KB modems on the internet, um, or Usenet even before that, but that's a phenomenal growth in bandwidth. The, second, the third factor is something called Yanni's Law. Uh, pro, pro, despite the lack of a silver bullet in software, programmer productivity has improved a factor of uh, twofold every six years. Now, if we take today and back into 30 years ago, back to the early 70s, that's almost a 65-fold increase in programmer productivity. A testament to that, you can tell this yourself, if you look 15 years ago, what did it take to do a data warehouse project? It might have taken 50 or 100 programmers in three to five years in order to pull something off, and a fraction of them were successful. Today, with a few people, in some cases, as many as, as few as two or three people in a matter of a few months, viable dashboards can be put together that actually dramatically influence business function. The last factor, which I'll point out, and this is a hard one to get into, and it's a challenge for the academics in the audience if you want a thesis topic, is um, how much the knowledge worker has been automated. Uh, historically, a lot of number crunching was done in computing, but really it, what's making viable decision making possible is the automation of the knowledge worker. Uh, this graphic was uh, pulled from a, a study done by UC Berkeley, which um, calculated the amount of original data stored on digital disk, and it's from a span of about uh, 94 to 2003, a 100-fold increase from um, 23 petabytes. Everybody know what a petabyte is? It's beyond a terabyte. Uh, to 2.5 exabytes. It's a phenomenal uh, growth. And this all, this statistic does not reflect, because it stops in 2003, uh, the explosion of digital media, videos, music, audio, et cetera. And I can't imagine what the number is like now. 
So I'm going to talk for a minute, just briefly fly through a handful of examples that Computech has worked on uh, for our customers with them. Uh, the first is DTV.gov. This is in support of the FCC's rollout to digital television. Uh, this um, application, a website, was very instrumental in supporting not only the policy formation, the transition, it was used by a lot of grassroots organizations to know where to target training, uh, and some of the technology behind it was pretty, pretty hefty and heavy. Uh, there was a fair bit of analysis, graphical information systems, the FCC engineers even did um, reception simulations so that you could type in your location to find out how, how deep your reception was going to be. And this was the beginnings of a dialogue with the public around a major government initiative. Um, you can go and visit the site now. It won't be that useful because most of the uh, interesting stuff has already faded to black since the transition is over. The second one is a system we did with Billy Casper Golf. Billy Casper Golf owns almost 100 golf um, uh, courses. Uh, they're growing by acquisition. Uh, they had a real problem in terms of trying to understand what the financial and sourcing picture was for supplies. Um, and what we did working with them was pull together um, a, a financial dashboard that fairly quickly, it was a handful of people uh, over a little more than a year that basically transformed the way they, uh, they access data. They were going from um, months between snapshots of the financial picture of the organization, of fairly dirty snapshots, to daily clean snapshots. Uh, their time to perform an M&A dropped dramatically and their need to add staff with each M&A in order to support the financial picture dropped to zero, close to zero. Um, the third one, which I'll basically throw uh, a, a stay tuned on, um, the federal government under Obama and the Congress mandated uh, the broadband initiative, national strategy for how to roll out broadband everywhere. Uh, the FCC is working diligently on putting a plan together. Uh, the mandate for this, by the way, is um, participative, participatory, open, data-driven, uh, and innovative. And um, there's some very cool things planned for uh, broadband.gov in terms of engaging many stakeholders, the public, industry, Congress, et cetera. Uh, and so I'd say stay tuned on that one. Um, the last one is closer to home. I know there's a number of CIOs in the audience. You have application portfolios. Um, you probably have project portfolios. This is a system that, that was built to support uh, an organization that went through a massive growth spurt from about uh, a dozen to 100 projects in the space of a couple of years. Uh, the organization needed to provide transparency into what was going on and drive consistency uh, and predictability in the process. Uh, the first iteration was put out with two people in about three months. Uh, two people stayed invested in this, and it, it really grew to transform the organization to be a cornerstone of, um, of, of what, uh, how the organization runs its projects. And I'll leave you with a few takeaways, our lessons learned from uh, doing these things over the, over the last several years. Uh, the first and most critical thing is to source operational data. If the data does not come as a byproduct of a viable business process, then you're really asking for trouble. Imposing upon a set of users distributed across a geography or multiple business units yet another reporting requirement is a guarantee for dirty data and noncompliance. Right, so if you have to, if you, if you need data that you can't get, it's incumbent upon you to change the underlying business processes so that those business processes generate that data. Um, the second point is to keep your focus on the KPIs. Vivek mentioned this earlier about starting small and growing. Start with one or two or three really important KPIs that measure what you want to influence or communicate, deploy it, and then grow from there. And remember that this tool or this device um, is, is also a device for transformation, to support transformation. And it may come a time when some of the KPIs you started with are no longer relevant because your transformation goals have been achieved. Don't hesitate to drop them out and replace them with new ones. And then the third thing is to focus on behavior. At the end of the day, Tom DeMarco talks about um, creating checklist zombies, and I think, again, Vivek alluded to this before, how do we get out of that checklist mindset? Um, you do not want people focusing on creating artifacts for the sake of artifacts. We want to manage behavior. And there's two parts of this. When you're adopting some of these things, particularly within distributed organizations, you need to make an investment in the change management. That is at least as critical as the technology. 
I had somebody ask me the other day about putting a dashboard together. Oh, isn't that just buying a COTS tool? It's like, no, you actually have a huge human element of change that has to go into this. The second piece to it is it can be a tremendous driver because this tool is going to give you insight, particularly in large complex organizations, into functions within the organization that you hadn't seen before. It's an opportunity for teaching, coaching, and transformation. You can identify where the bottlenecks are, who's underperforming, whose data is dirty. That's usually a reflection of poor business practice, and you can go in and remediate that business practice. So change management is a huge component of this. And then I'll leave you with that. We'll talk about it later. <laughs>